everyone, Lauren Berry here. We're honored to have Stephen Ritz as our latest guest on our Tower Garden TV series. Stephen is an award-winning educator, urban farmer, distinguished author, and founder of Green Bronx Machine. Today, Stephen is going to tell you all about the importance that food plays in early childhood education and development, and how Tower Garden can play into all of that. Stephen looks forward to sharing his knowledge with all of you, and we hope that you guys all learn a thing or two. So um, how important of a role can food play in early childhood education? Um, and how would you say having access to it can change students' lives? I've always said the most important school supply in the world is food because children will never be well-read if they're not well-fed. So making sure that children have the fuel to feed their minds and their bodies is critical from day one. Um, how do you get your students to actually try and enjoy eating veggies? Because we know students are picky. Well, students are picky, but in my classroom, every day is Friday. And it's not do this, do this, do this. It's let's have some fun. It's about excitement. It's about you being the parent and you engaging your child and you making this an attractive opportunity. I always say stickers go a long way. So make every day Friday, make it fun make it accessible, connect it to another activity. It doesn't have to be poison time, it should be pleasure time. So can you recall a situation with a student that impacted you where you knew that their quality of life was being improved through access to proper nutrition? Well, I've never met a child, no matter where I go in the world, whose quality of life has not been improved through quality nutrition. So fueling minds and fueling bodies with the food and nutrients that they need is absolutely critical for their success in school and around the world. And you know, sadly, I deal with a lot of children who are both hungry and malnourished. So giving them the essential food and energy that they need is one of the most rewarding things that we can do. It's our obligation to make sure children are well-fed. Please. Uh, I'm sure your job is very rewarding. Um, so obesity rates in children across the country are higher than ever. Um, what is your biggest concern about the health of our future generations? And why do you think something like a tower garden or tower farm can make such a big difference? Well, make no doubt about it. The pandemic has only exacerbated the crises that we have seen for years. Juvenile obesity, juvenile heart disease, uh, you know, coronary issues. We're seeing children who are obese in first and second grade. So providing them access and awareness to what food really is, is absolutely critical. Listen, food is not a thing that comes in a Ziploc bag from 1,000 miles away. Food is something that we can grow, grow locally, eat fresh, and eat healthy. And when children see it, they grow it. And most importantly, according to the USDA, children who have access to fresh fruits and vegetables in their early childhood years will consume 43% more vegetables and fruits and vegetables over the course of their lifetime. Not only is it good for them, it's great for the planet. So exposure equals access equals consumption. And that's what it's about. Make it fun. Get out there and make epic happen. I love the enthusiasm. So can you tell us a little bit about the New York City Food Policy Changemaker Award and what that means and name a few past recipients? Congrats, by the way. So thank you. Being recognized by the, by the most esteemed policy organization in all of New York City is a moment for which I take my hat off and I say thank you. And thank you to the New York City Food Policy Center for recognizing and constantly supporting our work. Um, to be held in the esteem of prior winners, such as the great Marion Nessel, who's had an influence on me, is absolutely heartwarming and, and is a testament to what we as a community and we as individuals can do, because all of us have the opportunity and the possibility of dripping kindness into a cup. And those drips fill the cup. But to be recognized again for the work that Green Bronx Machine did in the pandemic and realize this classroom was the epicenter for sourcing over 100,000 pounds of food delivered door to door to the most vulnerable families, rescuing over 10,000 pounds of food. And right here in this humble classroom, 5,000 pounds of food, it's awesome sauce. So get to growing. I want you to be the next winner in your city. That's what this movement is all about. It's not about me, it's about we. But again, thank you, New York City Food Policy Center. I am honored and humbled. And check out the website. Go to the New York City uh, Food Policy Center Game Changer Award and read all about it. It's amazing. Well, congrats to you. And you talked a little bit about this um, in response to your question, but 
you know, with so many students experiencing limited access to food in the pandemic, how did Green Bronx Machine try and solve this problem? So first and foremost, during the pandemic, we realized that there was food in the pipeline. We just needed to bring it to New York City. You know, restaurants were closed, but that didn't stop farmers from growing. We just wanted to make sure that food was not wasted. So I like to say we have this phenomenal network of uh, our foundational elders, our grandma and grandpa and auntie and uncle network, and the rest of people who are near and dear to me, many who are tuning in. So let me say thank you to everyone who supported us. And we literally used the school as an epicenter and turned this school into a supermarket and literally put fresh groceries out weekly for grab and grow bags. We then delivered food centrally to locations within the community and made sure people were able to come and get them in safe, responsible, and CDC compliant manners. And it's proof that if we can, you can. Collectively, America and the world, this is our moment. We need to love each other and do more of it. Uh, could not agree more. Um, so what is a common misconception that parents have about healthy eating? That kind of ties back into our picky eater question earlier. The common misconception about you know, about healthy eating. Oh, it's so hard. It is not so hard. Number one, you've got to lead by example. And I am not the food police. I'm really the food hero because I love to bring a variety of colors and shapes and textures to my children each and every day. I love to have them celebrate with stickers and trying things and making it culturally relevant and tying it to new things. Listen, food and meal time should not be torture time. Feel food and mealtime should be celebration. It should be an opportunity. It should be a vocabulary and barn building experience of family values. And that's what this is all about. Making it fun, making it accessible and encouraging children to try new things. It also means kind of, you know, stop materializing food and making food associated with celebrities. You know, sadly our nation has become entrenched with the notion of celebritizing food, the happy meal, the official food of this, the official drink of that, the official snack of so-and-so. Listen, it's time to get back to basics. And when children know that they can grow food, they tend to eat it. I've never seen a child not grow a carrot and say, ah, I'm not gonna eat it. They can't wait. They keep pulling those carrots out every single day. They don't even let them grow. So the whole opportunity here is really to expose kids, to make it fun, to encourage them, to never yuck a yum and always celebrate Tri Day because every day should be Tri Day. Definitely. So, what other opportunities do you see for people who aren't teachers to encourage growing their own food at scale? Well, let's look back to the to the Second World War, where half of the food grown in America was grown in our front yards. It's time to start thinking about less lawns and more food. Um, and now more than ever, when you think about food security issues, food mile issues, food safety issues, nutritional density issues, there is nothing more safe, nutritious, and delicious than growing your own food as close to the point of consumption as possible. I'm proud that we go from tower right back there to table right back there to tummy right over here in less than 20 feet almost daily. And that's exciting. And when children realize that food is something you can produce and you can grow and you can sell rather than getting in a getting it in a Ziploc fancy packaged product that really you know is is, is bathed in fossil fuel that's game changing not only for them but for the planet. I'm excited to see where our future generation is headed with access to um, classes like this and being being educated properly about. Well, that's the a great point. It's never been easier to grow your own food than it is right now. It's never been easier to grow your own food at home 365 days a year, regardless of seasonality, than it is with a tower garden. And I'm so proud that Green Bronx Machine has championed the benefit of growing your own food indoors 365 days a year, four stories up in a 110-year-old building in the middle of the Bronx using tower garden. Such an amazing story. So. We also wanted to hear more about your um, new PBS series that just launched this month. Congrats to you, that's so exciting. Um, we'd love to learn more about what users can uh, expect um, from the show. Well, thank you for that. You know, the basis of the show called Let's Learn is to get out there and inspire healthy living, something that I'm sure resonates with all of you, but using fun characters like, look, Leslie the Ladybug, she's here visiting. We've got a whole family of ladybugs coming to visit us here in the Bronx. So many cool things. The idea is to engage children around health, 
wellness, sustainability, community, empathy, and compassion, and wrap it in with a whole bunch of science and content. So after you watch this, I want you to go to our website, go to greenbronxmachine.org forward slash let's learn. Perhaps you guys could even put the graphic up and meet Leslie Ladybug, Patty the Pigeon, Artie the Ant, Sammy the Shark, Bobby the Bear. We've got such cool characters, and most of them are farming right, well, farming right here with me in the classroom. You know, Leslie learned about this classroom. She emigrated here after reading about me and my book called Make It Happen, and she came to live in Basil Towers, otherwise known as our tower garden, looking for aphids. And I'm glad she's eating those aphids because I do not like aphids, but Leslie does. <laughs> so you just have a lot of things going on right now from this, the launch of this PBS show and you know win winning awards and just making the most of um, food throughout the pandemic. You've had a lot going on the last year. We'd love to learn more about some of those special guests that were in your room this past week. Oh, yeah. Well, just this week, the new New York City school chancellor came to visit us right here and meet Leslie and watch the episode. Uh, earlier this week, the mayor championed the new summer learning program. I'm proud to say that Green Bronze Machine will de be debuting a tower to table to tummy cooking show all summer long featuring tower garden recipes that you can make with kids at home with no cooking. And it's all about the art and science of presentation and eating raw, processed, healthy food. So imagine that, that's something to look forward to this summer. But you know, from the bottom of my heart, I wanna thank the Juice Plus and Tower Garden Nation for their support. Um, it has been remarkable, but we have been able to accomplish together. I couldn't be more proud to be a part of it. I couldn't be more inspired by the food that I grow and the children that I grow and the results that collectively we're getting. So, uh, you know, we're now in 500 schools, our curriculum and growing each and every day in five nations around the world. And we're just getting started. So uh, I like to say from the Bronx to the world, si se puede, make epic happen, read the book if you haven't. It's a great book and it tells my amazing Tower Garden story. It's available on the Green Bronx Machine website. But do something today that you and your future self will thank you for. Look. I'm in here farming every day and you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start in order to be great. Well, we thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. And we're so excited for everyone to learn a little bit more about you, the importance of healthy childhood nutrition and having access to it. And we're so thankful that you took the time to speak with us, number one teacher. <laughs> Well, what I want is everyone to go and thank a teacher in their lives. And it could be their upline, their downline. It could be a mentor. Listen, collectively, we stand on the shoulders of giants. So it's time to look to our left and to our right and say thank you and acknowledge those who have gotten us to where we are. I certainly didn't do this myself. So I want to thank my wife and my daughter and my family and all of you watching because it's not about me. It's all about we. And together, we do this. So we need more support to get out there and make Epic happen. And be sure to watch Let's Learn. Give Leslie the Ladybug a vote. And who knows, she may come and visit your classroom, your community center, or one of your events via online soon. <laughs>